you. The whole thing about Top Gun is trying to get things in camera, to get people flying in the air. We wanted to be acrobatic, we wanted to get the jet down low. We want to be able to bank in corners and, and pull all these serious G's on everything and then just show that in the movie. This is not green screen nonsense. I mean, that was the whole point of this movie. How much can we capture? Top Gun is a movie about getting it in camera. There's ground to air. There was air to air. And some of the cameras were rigged in really impossible places. Verify cameras are on. There you go. And all these things just need a different kind of lens quality. And I went through a list of what can fit and have great range and clarity and still be IMAX worthy. We were using the Venice camera and we really wanted to be full frame as much as possible. Top Gun was kind of more about long lens, so we used the 75 to 400 all over the place. We just needed the length, we needed the reach. We tried to use full frame as much as we possibly can for that big epic kind of feeling to it. <laughs> During the middle of the movie, we actually had a chance to get a hold of the Permista 28 to 100. It was amazing. I wish we could have kept it, but unfortunately, it was only one in the world at the time. We loved the full frame aspect of it. It was sharp, it was straight. It was like you went to the wide end of the lens. There was no like bowing, there was no barreling. One of the only full frame zooms I know that's actually decent enough to shoot with. I wanted something fast that can kind of keep up with an F-18. We're flying with an acrobatic jet. It's amazing how that thing flies. And we needed something like that to chase the jets. It was the only thing I thought we can almost keep up. <laughs> Three, two, one, turn The Sydney jet is kind of based off an aerial team. They let Helenet modify two of them for air-to-air -air work. And that's how we were able to get a lot of the dynamic shots of going through canyons, going low. The shots are countering, they're going with, they're telling story points from the air. I've been in that jet, that thing is awesome. And the small shot over is the only one that could actually go on the cine jet. We had to use smaller lenses, so that's why we kind of used the 20 to 120 and the 85 to 300 as, as switching in and out. And those were just a great combo to put in that jet. When we were allowed to have the larger shot over on the helicopter, then we chose the 25 to 300 just because we needed the range, because sometimes we were wide, sometimes we were tight, and we all, uh, we just loved the clarity of the lenses. What I do love about the, the Fuji zooms, like all of them from the Permista to the Premieres, there's no oddball barrel distortion when you're zooming, or there's no vignetting, there's no softening toward the edges. It's all straight. We just like how the Fuji lens kind of maintains its field of view throughout the zoom range. If you get a flare in the zoom, it doesn't fog the lens. It's a beautiful zoom. The coatings are great. The lens doesn't change its character. When you get to the 14.5, you kind of expect there'd be barrel distortion on it, but it's pretty clean. There's no, there's nothing on that thing. Another great thing about the, the Fuji zooms is their T2. I am just known to light for at low light levels. The zoom didn't have any issues being lit at those levels because there's some lenses that sort of fall apart at the wide end or for some reason or another, or they breathe funny and there was none of that nonsense. You could have the 1885 up there and have a great range that's on set that's similar to most primes out there. And I feel like, sometimes I feel like that's all I need. <laughs>